Gene is interviewing the Hart Foundation and Jimmy Hart, and he begins with the following statement. As always, this reporter is sickened by the treachery and the villainy practiced by you, Bret Hart. And Bret just says, well, practice makes perfect. And they all go, ha, 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 ha. They're there to finish what they started. Jimmy says, Miss Elizabeth is the daughter of the devil. She was trying to bewitch my men. They did what they had to do. And as for Randy Savage taking a guitar over the head, he is just lucky the honky-tonk man doesn't play the piano. And they all laugh, and they leave. And Gene shakes his head and says, if there are sicker men in the sport I love, I don't know who they may be. Really, Gene? Of all the people. I'm pretty sure you know <laughs> sicker people, people in these three crazies. <laughs> Jimmy Hart and the Hart Foundation are the sickest men in the sport he loves. All right. Then Gene is there to interview Randy Savage and Liz. He begins by asking Liz, show the thing from last time again when Honky Tonk Man shoved Liz down. And Gene goes to interview Liz. He asks her how she's feeling. And she says, and I'm not making this up. She says, well, there's still some pain, but... I'm fine. And Gene moves on. <laughs> he just well, starts... what the hell do you want him to... I mean, she said I'm fine. I mean, what more... But she said it in a way that made it clear she is not fine. Well, I mean, she's not psychologically fine. I mean, you could look in her in her face. She this has is the a same damaged look woman. Always. <laughs> this is a very damaged woman who is very used to having her emotions and feelings put on the back burner, and she put them right back there to move on with Gene and Randy Savage. Well, quite frankly, Randy jumped right in and said, I'm not fine with it. That did happen. And they vowed he was going to take these. He would not rest until these cowards got what they deserved. That's right. So it's Randy Savage, Macho Man Randy Savage versus Brett the Hitman Hart. And the first portion of this is just Savage trying to figure out what to do with Liz. If he brings her into the ring, she's not safe there. But if he leaves her on the floor, then Anvil and Jimmy Hart can get after her. So he's got to deal with that. Vinny, hold well, on take a second. A hold Everyone on. hold on a minute. All right, well, we're back, everybody. We've we've done all we could, but Vinny's just got shitty internet right now based on this speed test, so we're just going to plow on through this, and you'll have to deal with Max Headroom for your dated reference. But We're talking the 80s here, so I guess it's not that dated. Go ahead, Vinny. All right, so the long story of this match, this is a long, long-ass match, like a 20-minute match, maybe probably a lot more, actually, if you include the commercials, so... The key is they did not just go out there and do some stuff and then do that same stuff for 20 minutes. This match had different chapters. They had a beginning and a middle and an end. And the beginning part of it, both actually before the actual bell rang and then really once it started too, is it's Randy Savage against three men. Because he has to fight not only Bret Hart inside the ring, but he also has to fight... Neidhart and uh, Jimmy Hart outside the ring keep them away from Elizabeth. They're constantly menacing her and harassing her. He has to protect them. So it's Randy Savage versus three dudes. And he's doing just fine. And he, about five minutes in, he knocks Hart from the apron. Hart goes sternum first into the guardrail, and he goes down. And there is an interview on Wrestling with Shadows where Brett's talking to one of his kids, talking about the time he broke his sternum. And for a second, I thought, Jesus, was this it? Was I there when Brett broke his sternum? But no, he's just really, really, really good at selling. So as Brett is down, Nightheart and Jimmy Hart get in the apron, but Savage counters them, bonks their heads together. But that's enough of a distraction that when Savage goes up top and does the axe handle to the floor, now Brett has the megaphone, and he whacks Savage in the gut coming down. So really at this point, we're, we're like five minutes in. But that's the first part where the actual wrestling match starts. Because uh, up to then, it had just been Randy Savage beating up three dudes and kind of playing tag. So, Brett cuts him off. They wrestle for a while. Savage kicks out of a pile driver, which you almost never saw in 1987. There was lots of trash being thrown in the ring in this show. I believe a broken egg at one point was over by the apron. And Savage makes his comeback, running wild, but he charges. Brett backdrops him out of the ring. Savage takes his Massive bump over the top to the floor, and he immediately grabs his ankle. His ankle screwed up. And he begins to undo the laces on his boot as Liz, Liz tends to him, and the referee is out there. This referee was working so hard to make sure none of these three heels laid a finger on Randy Savage on the floor. This ref was doing his job. I do love this spot where, oh, my ankle's hurt. I better undo my boots. Yeah. It's like, dude, you know what boots are for? You know why they lace all the way up? Because they're there for the support for your ankles. Yes. 
Like the last thing you want to do if your your ankle is unlace your boots, you want to keep that thing real tight. That is exactly right. That is exactly right. But it's a much greater visual effect if you say, "Oh no, the man has removed his boot. His leg must be in bad shape." And indeed, it was. As Brett begins to work him over, and now the match has totally changed. Randy Savage is screwed. Brett is in there taking him apart. Just all you have to do is finish him off, and he's torturing him. He's putting him in leg hold after leg hold, spitting toe holds, all this. And Jesse calmly says, hey, calmly explains that all Savage has to do is say, I quit. And then he's done. And it's over. But then in the middle of all this, as Brett is working him over, he goes for a body slam. Randy Savage turns it into a cradle. He gets the win. And neither of the announcers pointed this out. But this is the exact finish where Savage lost the Intercontinental title to Ricky Steamboat at WrestleMania earlier this year. He has learned from his mistake. He's used it against others and, in, the, in a way, has found redemption. And he is now on the side of the right. So Randy Savage wins. The Hart's going to finish him off with uh, finish him off three on one, but he fights back. He gets a hold of the megaphone. He's out there running wild on one leg. Eventually chases them off and collapses. This was an awesome, awesome match. And uh, well, I got a lot to say here about this one. Mm. First off, there's there's all sorts of great matches. Like I said, the Suzuki Nagata match was great, but that is not a match. I would not have if I ran a wrestling school. I would not show everyone Suzuki Nagata to learn how to work because I don't want them to work like that. Right, these guys beat the shit out of each other. They were these clunking headbutts, which ah. you know, after Shabbat, I thought we'd learned a lesson, but apparently not. But I mean, they worked their asses off, and they had a very good match doing nothing. So. If I could find one, maybe their first one that they did together, that would be a good one to show students. This match here, every wrestling student ever should watch this match. Not only every student, but if you're already a worker and you've never seen this match, you need to watch this match. The psychology in this match, the work is a a baby face by Randy Savage, the work is a heel by the Hart Foundation, the selling by Bret Hart of the sternum shot. The selling of Randy Savage's fucking leg. So great. Randy Savage had his leg injured. And guess what? He can't do anything now. He can't run. He can't jump. He can't do all his flying moves at the end. He didn't go up there and, and do like a springboard or some crazy shit. Because his fucking leg hurt. Oh, the best he could do was get a roll-up out of a body slam attempt. And then, after the match, he's still limping, and the only reason that the heels were run off was because Jimmy Hart accidentally hit his own guy, and Randy Savage got a hold of the gimmick, and they all went running. Not because he could move, because he couldn't move. He's limping on one leg. How many times did he hear that Bret Hart was too small? And here he is in this match, <laughs> the same size or bigger than the Macho Man Randy Savage. It's amazing how things like that work. But That's true. He was in there, you know, just as big as Randy. So the other thing that you n- never see this nowadays, Brett, one of the things that Brett was so great at was if Brett did a 15-minute match, which was about how long this match was, about eight, nine minutes in, Brett starts slowing down. His mouth is open. Mm -hmm. He's selling like he's getting tired. Yes. But do you actually think that Bret Hart was getting tired in this match? Of course not. But in Bret's mind, if this were an athletic contest, I would not be going the same speed at the end that I'm going at the beginning. That doesn't make any sense. Nowadays, it's like, you know, a badge of honor, everyone's got great cardio, so you just go the same fucking speed from start to finish. Brett, that was part of the story of the match. The hitman starts getting a little tired there at the end, and he's slowing down a little bit. He was such a great worker. And Randy Savage, both of them, everything they did, you need to watch this match if you've never seen it, or if you're going to go to wrestling school or whatever, this is a fucking masterpiece of learning how to work a match. I realize it. Times have changed and everything like that, but 
This match was in fucking 1987. It was the best match I watched all week. I like this match better than Suzuki Nagata because they were fucking killing each other. But like, as a match, this this would have been the best match in 2020 on any show. I don't want to hear that the shit doesn't work. I don't want to hear that we don't need baby faces and heels and that now you don't need to sell the leg anymore because everyone expects this. Bullshit. Bullshit. This stuff was great and it's timeless. Love this match.